Hallelujah. Good morning, Broadway. We're in Railway Square today, preaching the gospel of the good news again. How many people need good news today? How many people realize that they are in danger, spiritual danger today? How many people realize that they are walking around with an unregenerated spirit? What does that mean? When you have an unregenerated spirit, it means that your connection to your Creator has been broken down. You have no connection to your Creator. And that means if you go from this earth for whatever reason, and that can happen, people, don't think you're invincible, <laughs> don't think your life will just go on and on. 150,000 people a day die, and they didn't get up in the morning thinking that this would be their last day on earth. You have no idea. You have no idea when you are going to die. But God knows. That's why I'm here today, sounding the alarm for people. I'm sounding the alarm for you to think about your eternal life. People do not even want to think about it. But I'm here prompting you to do that. Because this is important for you, not for me. I'm gaining nothing from this other than I'm being obedient to my God. Because my God said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. That's you. That's you today. So I'm preaching the good news and every person across the road there, can you tell me where you are going to spend eternity? Some people have no idea. Some people try and not even care about it. Try and not even think about it. But I'm here today to cause you to think about it, to ask you to consider your eternal life. This is all about you people. The living God has his arms open wide for you today. People are avoiding me, but don't avoid thinking about your eternal salvation. It's important to you. God loves you. God cares for you today. He wants a relationship with you. He knows everything about you already. Everything you did last night. He knows every hair on your head. And he wants you to get to know him. And once you get to know him, everything will be different. You will be reconnected to the God of this universe. You will be safe in eternity. Are you safe in eternity at the moment? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea where you're going to be? You have to think about it, people. I'm asking you to think about your eternal life. This is important to you. And it's important to me. Why would it be important to me? I've never met you before in my life. I don't know any one of you. But God knows you, and God loves you, and God's got me out here preaching the gospel for you to hear it today so that you will be thinking about something more than lunch. All people think about is what am I going to have for lunch and all those important things. Think about your eternal life. Life is not guaranteed to any person. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You do not know if you will make it through the day today. Only God knows. That's why he's got me out here. This could be an urgent call for you. Listen up, people. It's important. God loves you. God cares for you. God wants you to have a relationship with him. People say, I'm so full of this life, I'm so busy thinking about this life, I'm not going to think about my eternal life. Yet I'll go out and I'll pay insurance on my house, insurance on my car. But when it comes to your eternal life, nobody seems to even think about it. That's why I'm here today, people. I brought you to think about your eternal life. People look at me and say, that's offensive, you're talking too loud, you're, you're doing noise pollution. If noise pollution will get you saved, if noise pollution will give you some security in your eternal life, I don't care if I make a lot of noise. But probably I make a lot of noise. I want to make a lot of noise. But I'm going to shout even louder. I have people here. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I know what it can do for you because I know what it's done for me. I'm here to testify about the good news. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, you're but the most important thing for you, 
This is about you. This is about your life. Why are people not thinking about their eternal life? Is it too scary for you? Too scary? It should be. You do not know Jesus Christ. You should be afraid. You have no assurance of where you're going to spend eternity. But you can have Jesus Christ has made the way back to the Father for every person. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whosoever, that's you, that's me, whosoever who believe in him and open their heart and invite him into their heart will be saved. But if you deny it, if you reject it, if you just walk by and say, I don't care less, you have heard the gospel. You must listen, people. Open your heart. This is for you today. Like people to care about you, we all want somebody to care about us. I care about you today, and I do not even know you. I've never seen you before in my life. Why would I care what happens to your eternal life? Because God, the God of this universe, cares. He cares for you. He cares for you today, people. Understand what's happening here. We did not deserve to be saved. We did not deserve to have eternal life in the presence of God. We were born with a sinful nature. Every one of us has sinned. Put your hand up if you haven't sinned. And there's your first lie if you say you haven't. You just committed the first lie. Listen, people. God loves you today. God cares for you. God wants a relationship with you today. Eight billion people on this earth. We're just a speck in the universe. Why would the creator of this universe care about us? He does. He cared enough to send his own son. He cared enough that his son walked the path to the cross. He did it for you. He did it for me. At any time, he could have pulled out, but he didn't. He stayed the course. He stayed the course because of grace, because of love, because of mercy, unmerited favor that he has laid upon us. And all we do is walk by and say, I don't care. You need to care because every person one day will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You might think you won't, but every person will be standing there. You won't have your friends near you. It'll just be you. And you'll be looking into the eyes of your Creator. And every sin, every word, every thought, every deed will be laid open. And He will say, why will I let you into my heaven? There's no sin in my heaven. I've sent my son to save you. You walk past. This is what's going to happen, people. Open your hearts. Don't be hard-hearted. Listen to what God is saying to you today. The Spirit of the Lord is here today. And he cares about you, man. He cares about you. He wants you saved. You might not care about yourself, but he cares about you. He cares enough for me to be here speaking the gospel to you. The good news of the gospel. But something more important has come up. I've got to look at my phone. Yeah, I'm having a go at you because I want you to think. <laughs> what have I got to do to get people to think about their eternity? What is it, people? What's going to make you think about it? Is it fear of death? Is anybody afraid of dying here? Does anyone think they're not going to die? I've got news for you. We're all going to die. In a hundred years, nobody will be here. Nobody in front of me, including me. We won't be here. We'll be gone. everything about you. He knows every hair on your head. 
he's got them numbered. That's what he says in the Bible. And he also says, unless you are born again of his spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot see heaven. People, this is serious. This is for you, not for me. It's for you. He loves you. He cares for you. He doesn't want you to die in your sin. He wants you to die knowing him. So that on that day, good girl, good girl, got a thumbs up there.
I live a, if I live a good life, God's going to have some scales up there. And he's going to weigh up and he's going to say, yes, you did some good works, I'll let you in. It doesn't work that way. You must be born again. This will tell you all about it. Now listen, my friend, even though you are a Buddhist, were your parents Buddhist as well? So why did you choose Buddhism? Yeah, the purpose of your life and, and the afterlife. Very important. So, okay. Yeah, come and, listen, come and talk because listen, you're going to be famous. You're going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let me say this to you. Do you believe in God? I don't know. We have so many gods. People have different gods. Yes. Understanding God. Sure. I don't have a specific word for God. But do you believe there's a higher power? I believe we have higher power and we have spiritual and we don't know. So many we don't know. So I only I really want to know something we don't know. Okay. Yeah. You can. Oh, you yeah. can know. Yeah. You know what God does? When you're born of His Spirit, testifies on the inside of you and nobody can tell you anymore you just know you just know. I just know that God is real and I just know that if I get hit with that if I get hit with that bus I will go straight into the presence of God and I will spend eternity with you that's an assurance and he gives it to every person and he will give it to you and you know you know what you cannot buy it you give me all your money you cannot buy it you cannot earn it if anything you do, any works that you do, you say, all my good works mean nothing. Because everything you do takes it away from what Jesus did. So he came to this earth, he gave his life, and he took your sin, and every person's sin, on his own self. And when he died, he conquered death. And he went back to the Father, and he sent his Holy Spirit. Okay. This, this is the Bible, all right? So what it says is you must be born again. All that means is that you sincerely, in your heart, believe that Jesus Christ died for you. That's all it takes. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. It's got to be sincere. If you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. That's what the Bible says. So, so what, what, do more than one good idea. Let me tell you this. Hundred and look when you give Google next time, 150,000 people a day died. 67 million people died in 2022. They didn't get up in the morning and say, gee, I'm not going to make it through this day. They had no idea. And, uh, this is a divine appointment. Why you're here today and why I'm here is because of God and His Spirit. It's a plan. And this is my friend. It's a simple thing of inviting Jesus into your heart. You can have that assurance. Would you like to do that? I'll pray for you. I have this book. I've got this book. Okay. So, I always look down when I got home. Let me put more urgency on it. You might not make it home. No, I'm not being. It, it's a fact. You don't know. I don't know when I'm going to die. So if you if you die without a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you know what will happen? You'll be standing before God. There won't be any of us here. It'll just be you. And you'll be looking right into the eyes of the living God. And he will say to you, why have you been my heaven? You have sin all over your life. What are you going to say to me? On the other side of the coin is, if you know Jesus Christ, the same question will be asked again. Jesus Christ will say, I know this man. I have taken his penalty. I've taken it for him. I have his sin upon me. He has no sin upon him now. I've given him all my righteousness. That's what he's promising. So why would you let that opportunity pass, my friend? What are you afraid, are you afraid of just asking him into your life? No. Okay, now that's a fair comment because it has to be sincere. All right. So can we can we just pray now? Okay. What was your name? Kevin. 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 I'm just going to pray in the name of Jesus. All right. Now God has brought you here, so just bow your head and I'll pray with you. All right. 
So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just bring Kevin before you now. Lord, he has an inquiring heart for you. You are knocking at the door of his life. And you said if he hears your voice and opens the door, you will come in and sup with him and him with you. And you will give him eternal life, Lord. I ask you now to reveal yourself to him, Lord, that he has made the right thing. He said the right thing, Lord. It can't be just a decision. It's not just a prayer. It's a sincere belief in you. He needs to know more. Lord, open his heart, open the eyes of his understanding, so he comes to understand and know you, that you would save his soul, because that is your desire, that none should perish, Lord, that all should come to the same knowledge of you. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will rest your hand upon his life, Lord. Give him peace about this decision, and when he gets his head on his pillow tonight, Why am I here? I am not, I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed <laughs> of the gospel at all. Because I know what God has done for me and I want it for every person. And you know what? When you're born in His Spirit, God's in love with you. Can you feel His love coming out of my, my eyes to you? He loves you. I love every person. I'm able to do that only because of the grace of God. It's a wonderful life. Everything yeah. changes. Okay? It makes you new. Yeah. The moment your spirit is active, oh, wow. it's, it's dead. We're born in a sinful nature. When you're born again, it means your spirit is more alive to God. You're reconnected. You're reconnected to the Creator. This is special. Like, be serious about this. I'll look out. Really be serious about yeah. it. So, so, why am I here? Yeah. Because the Bible says. God commands us, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay? That's the great commission. Yeah, yeah that's great commission. That's, that's what I'm doing. Every yeah. day I'm out here. Every, wow. every day, every day, every day, every day I'm out the street. Wow. I'm all over the place. Burwood yeah. and yeah. Parramatta and everywhere. You are a real believer. I, I believe it. <laughs> I can only do that because of this. Yeah. Wow. This, is, this is not something I work yeah. out. I can't do it. Wow. He, I yield to God. He, he gives me the strength. Take it really seriously. And listen, if you go and have lunch or something, yeah. and you make a decision, come back, I'll pray with you. All right? Okay? I'm not, not, Mike. Mike with the mic, okay? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kevin. God bless you. What's your name? Aaron. 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 See you, Aaron. See you, Mike. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for coming up. I'll probably see you somewhere in the city. I'll talk to you again. I want to see you in heaven, all right? I won't see you in heaven without that commitment. God bless you, Kevin. Okay. Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Do you know if you have everlasting life? Do you know where you're going to go when you pass from this world? People don't want to think about it, but I'm here today to prompt you to think about your eternal life. I keep saying it over and over again because different people are coming by but it's the same message it's the same message of good news of hope do you have hope in your life at the moment do you know where you're going to spend eternity do people even think about it i'm here to ask you to consider your eternal life this life is so short this life is unpredictable you do not know when your number is up and that's not a fear thing, but it should be. You should be afraid. If you do not know where you're going, you have no assurance. You have no idea when you're going to pass from this earth. And you're walking around like you couldn't care less. Like all things are important. That's it. Talk to me. I'm getting a few reactions. He's inviting you to come to him and have your spirit saved that you are connected back to the Father. You can come back and talk to me. God loves you. Come back. Take a track. Understand what we're talking about today. Because you do not know if this is your last day on earth. And people don't want to think about that. 150,000 people a day die. And they have no idea that this was going to be their last day on earth. They have no idea. 
Do you know when you're going to die? Nobody can answer that question for me. Nobody can answer it, but you don't know. You do not know if it's your last day. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is freedom, it is spiritual freedom for people. At the moment, you are lost, you are forsaken, you are in darkness, you might not think so, but you are in spiritual darkness, you are disconnected with your creator, and there is no way back unless you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He has made the way back. He's done it for you. He's done it for me. He's done it for every person. And people say, I've, I've sinned too much. My sin is too bad. God cannot forgive me. I've done terrible things. That's not true. He will forgive you. He has forgiven you. But you need to come to Him. He has taken your sin upon Himself. He's taken your penalty upon Himself. He died for every person. Every person. And it doesn't matter what you've done. Some people say, oh, I haven't done enough bad things to be saved. That's pride talking, people. That's pride saying, I haven't done enough bad things, I don't need saved. That is a dangerous position to take. The state you are in at the moment is that you are forsaken. You are lost. You are in darkness. You are disconnected from your Creator. But it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's available for every person. He is no respecter of person. It doesn't matter about your age. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. He will save you. He's knocking at the door of your life today. As you hear his voice today, and you open that door, he said, I will come in. I will save you. And people look at me like I'm just yelling on the corner here. I'm doing it for you people, not for me. This means nothing to me. I've got a little box out here asking for $2 or anything. I don't need your money. I don't care about your money. I care about your eternal life. I care about what happens to you after you pass from this earth. Even if you don't care, I care. I care what happens to you. The love of God is in me for you. Come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. God so loved the world. You're the world. Doesn't matter where you come from. No matter what race you are, what, what you believe. It doesn't matter what sin you've done. God loves you. God cares for you. Why are people not considering their eternal life? Why are you just looking by like it doesn't matter? It does matter. If you pass from this earth without a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you will be condemned to the pit of hell. I don't want that for you. God doesn't want that for you. He so loved the world that he gave his son's life so that you could be free. But you have to do something. You have to open your heart. He's not going to force you. He doesn't want robots. He doesn't want slaves. He wants a free will choice. He wants you to open your heart and say, come into my life. Give me new life. Take my penalty of sin. He'll do it for you. But you must do something. This is about you, people. This is about you. In the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God is here today. The Spirit of God cares for every person. Everyone's walking towards me. I'm telling you I am not ashamed of the gospel of peace because it's freedom for you. It's salvation for you. Every person, doesn't matter what you've done, God loves you. Come and talk to me. Come, come and talk. Okay. You're too much of a hurry to have your soul saved. You're too much of a hurry to assure your eternal life. What is wrong with people? What's happened to common sense? Has common sense departed us and left us completely? Come on, people, this is about you, not me. I'm here for you. God loves you enough to have me here on the corner telling you, consider your eternal life. Every one of you at the moment, listen, you are lost, you are forsaken. How else can I say it? You think you're safe, you are not safe. You need a relationship with God. You need to know where you're going when you die. Do you know? when you're going to die. I'm trying to put urgency on this, people, so people think about it. All they're thinking about is what they watched on the screen last night. What did you watch on the screen last night? Something good? <laughs> that's, that's what's running your life. That's what's leading you around by the nose. That's what's keeping you in bondage. You can be free. Jesus Christ offers freedom to you. He said, I will set you free from 
that's what's important today. It's not important that you get offended because I'm loud. I'm loud
Hey man, welcome to the club, sister. Yeah. Welcome to the club, <laughs> yo. You a track to take with you. I want you to, I want you to read this. Okay. Okay. This is what, this is what you've done. So it's just reinforcing. Okay. I'm going to give you a gospel of John. Oh, okay. One of these. This is a uh, This is for you to read. This is the word of God. Okay. You just start reading it. This is Jesus talking to you. When you see the words on there. Your spirit is new again. You're brand yes. new creation, okay? You're born of his spirit. Congratulations, Thank you. Oh, thank God. Um, it, it's, it's a private channel that I can. Special, special time. You know why? I've got you here today. Now, listen, don't run away. God has got you here today. It's a fine appointment, all right? Okay. You, you would be here, and you, I would be here, and you'd be back with you. Can we just say it to you? It. It. Like, I don't think God has a gender. I think oh, God is kind okay. of like a universal um, entity. I don't think it has a gender. Okay. Because gender is something that we constructed, society. Oh, I understand. You know what? Everybody has their own truth. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so four billion people have their own truth. Are they all right? Uh, it's all subjective. It's all okay. subjective to each person's okay, experience. Okay, so you can be wrong. Somebody can be wrong. Um, wrong based on what, though? Based on the truth. There is only one truth. But truth for, for many other people is subjective. Everyone has their own subjective truth, and That's truth true. truth is is what you believe to be true. Okay. So tell me this: if, if that's true, what you're saying, and we all had our own truth about speeding on the road. You okay. said, you said, oh, I want to do one kilometer an hour. And the next person said, my truth says I want to do 100 kilometers an hour in 60 days. Okay. There'd be chaos. There has there to be, be there has to be a moral code and a truth that we can all start to measure. I think there could be a better analogy used other than speeding signs compared to God and how people go between God and interpret God. Um, well, God, speeding, speeding signs on the road is a defined law, and God is not a defined law. God has a defined law. God has a moral code. What is that moral code? Five thousand years old. What is the moral code based on? Moral code is well, basically the Ten Commandments, basically. Okay, in Christianity. In, in Christianity. The moral code for God based in Islam is uh, the Quran. The moral code based in Judaism is the Torah. Okay. Um, let me say this to you. Jesus Christ is the only one that rose from the dead. That is significant. And, and Christianity is the only religion or the only following that does not require you to do works to say every other religion says you must do something, you must, like there's going to be these scales here, if you do good enough, you're going to make it to heaven, if you do bad enough, you're going to do something else. It's mm. different from Christianity. It's different from Christianity. It is different from Christianity, except I think doing work on yourself is an important part of becoming a better human being. Um, if, if, you just, if you just think, okay, I can live my whole life and God will accept me when I die and take me into heaven, then you haven't really become a better person. You haven't really shown that, um, you haven't really aligned yourself with the morals and the beliefs. Like in Buddha, um, Buddhism, um, Buddhism, Buddhism, thank you, um, you kind of, uh, there's like this practice called metta, and you kind of cultivate love and compassion and kindness for all living things. And in that process, you become a better human being. So it's, it's kind of like, well, if you follow these practices, then you will obtain like enlightenment or you will obtain like um, peace. But right, so every person is different. Some people have strong will, some people have weak will. Absolutely. Some, you know, so how can that be fair if somebody can do it? This is where Christianity is the equal. We I don't get that one because alright, so you're assuming that God made everyone in his image, right? God made everyone in his image. So then he therefore made people do a weak will and strong will. So then are you saying that he then makes problems for them and then he saves them? Let, let me tell you how it works. Yeah. Right? 
God made Adam and Eve in his image. Right. He made them in his image. They were sinless. And then but they were also clueless. God wasn't clueless. If God made Adam, Adam and Eve in his image, then why did he make them um, so oblivious to sin? Or like so oblivious to what being a good human I, I, is? I Nobody has seen God. So when you walk with God, like I'm walking with God. Yeah. Yes. Know God, you know him. <laughs> loving presence right um and so we can say Je jesus's love is always available to us in the same way we can say meta this loving kindness surrounding this loving kindness is, this energy of loving kindness is just available to us that we can tap into and we can we can use to um uh show other people loving so is kindness. that your belief is buddhism your belief um i'd say it's a it's, i say it's a part of it definitely i think it's helped me build my beliefs of, of loving other people Basically, you're doing it out of yourself, it sounds. Um, not, no. Not a believer in Christianity. You believe in Jesus Christ? Absolutely. I used to be Christian for my whole upbringing up until 2021. I had a spiritual awakening. Yeah, this is not in any way ever perish. That means there's no possibility. 
You have a bit of trouble listening. Well, because I'm so pillow. strong in my beliefs, I know what I, I know. I know what are. I know, and I know, but I know what I believe, and I, it so happens to be. And clear it up. You got to read it and give it to somebody else. Right? You might say somebody else is into it. I don't know if that's in my hands. I don't know if that's no, but, in my hands. But the knowledge you can pass on. Okay? Your friends getting yeah, getting a bit agitated over there. there. But um, I'll see you around. This okay. Conversation. God bless you. This will be on YouTube. This will be on YouTube. Okay, under what title? Um, I, can, I can send you a link. Okay. 